Morning, Douglas. Morning, Edward. How is your run? As good as any usual on. But it would be a lot better if it wasn't for that wretched the Bompoa plant. I didn't mind my work, but you think they would have built it in a less populated area? I know. Duck's already raised that topic and others like it with the fat controller. I'm in surprise. We've had some points in our bid scene following this ho ho for muckle destruction that human race can create when given the power to do say. Unfortunately, that's often the case in such situations, Douglas. Hey, I'm jealous you're light. Better I wish the fuck controller had considered things for Elka Angle if for agreeing to that monstrosity. This will cause problems in the future. Why on earth would our own controller, Sir Richard Topham Hat the Fourth, decide to build a nuclear power plant on Sodor, which is our own home? I don't get why he had to agree with the government to build that power plant in the first place. It's just disgraceful, disgusting, despicable. Guys, there was a reason the Fat Controller agreed to building a nuclear power plant. He needs to keep the Northwestern Railway running along with the Scarlowy, Coldyfell and Arsdale Miniature Railways. I have to agree with Thomas there. Most of us have been on the Northwestern Railway and the island of Sodor for many years, and change happens all the time. When change happens, the only thing we can do is get used to that change. No offense, Edward, but building a nuclear power plant here on Sodor is still a bad idea. I'm very worried about what would happen if that power plant did explode or spread something so dangerous that it could affect us engines and people. I think you're just worrying awful much, James. For what I've been told, their power plant is after to do safety checks and practices just in trial there is an actual emergency involving it. I have to agree with Emily there. Sometimes we have to put up with things we don't like. Fair light, Edward. But what would happen if the power plant does explode? What would even happen to all of us, along with everyone else on Sodor? Don't worry, Molly. I'm confident that it will never happen. I agree with Thomas. I'm not sure that's fully true, Thomas. Not everything goes well all the time. You never know when fate has other ideas. Don't worry, James. If the power plant does explode, we will all face the disaster together, no matter what waits for us. Bear is right. We will all pull through this together. Ram after me. Yon, toi, flee, together. together. That's what we love to hear. Well, Edward, if they really did need that many fire engines during a drill, then I dread how many they would need when an actual emergency happens involving the power plant. I agree with you, Gordon, and I've got an even more worrying question for what happens if there's an actual emergency involving the power plant. Will using all the fire trucks on Sodor be enough? That power plant is absolutely massive. That is a very good point, Henry. Well, they won't be. 
there will be absolutely nothing they can do. You sound very sure about that, Duck. Oh, I'm not just sure that's what will happen when the paraplon explodes, James. I am completely 100% certain that's what will happen when the paraplon explodes. Well, Duck, if that does happen, what do we do? Get out of Sodor like the devil is after you, that's what. And don't stop for anything whatsoever apart from co, water or fuel. Well, Duck, I think you're just exaggerating the magnitude of this hypothetical situation. Ha! Don't think so low, Thomas. When the paraplon explodes, Sodor will go sky high. And so will we if we don't get out of here as quickly as possible. And you'd better believe that.
off and shuffle through the night Till I'm far away and free And when my steam runs out I'll know That no one will find me But things are not the same as before Mistakes I make no one can ignore I keep my pain to work looking fine I try so hard to be on time But I'm not a useful engine anymore I'm not a useful engine Experiment 21-1. Engine known as Thomas has been acquired. He was beaten up a bit after being derailed by Harold and Herbert, known as Ari and Bert to the locals, the Ironworks twins. Once he was brought to the Ironworks, we cleaned up Thomas and repainted him. He was very surprised and very grateful we did that to him. We told him that he was welcome and then told him that he could redeem himself by trying to be the best engine he could be, with some secret help from us. We told him that we are going to inject him with a chemical that will make him faster and stronger. He is very excited about that. However, Thomas does not know our true intentions. In reality, the chemical that we are going to inject him with will turn him into our weapon of destruction. Right now, he is in one of the sheds just before the main building. Experiment 21-2. We have now injected Thomas, who has complained about nausea, and a pain internally, but we told him that that was completely natural. Right now he is trying to get to sleep and we're going to do some further research. Experiment 21-3. Thomas woke up a few minutes ago and we put him through a strength test. This test was very successful since he managed to knock a flatbed over in one swift movement. We have also given Thomas anesthetics after he terminated the test. Experiment 21-4. The demon that we have injected in Thomas has now started to take over him since his eyes have now changed color. Tendrils have grown inside his face as well and can now come out of the mouth of the face. And spider-like legs have also grown on Thomas which can hold Thomas off the ground some feet. We're really making major progress now. Experiment 21-5. Face is now removable, exposing a much bigger mouth and teeth, which covers the whole smoke box. Tendrils can come out much more in that much bigger mouth. Uh, he's getting hungry. Martin's gone missing. Blood dripping from the engine's mouth pretty much answered our question. We lured the ironworks engines in and got them ready for the test. Horrified. One of them tried to escape, but ended up crashing into a van that we put on the tracks on one of the sidings. He was then attacked by Thomas, and
and as a result, oil dripped everywhere, which started a fire. As soon as the second one arrived, Thomas attacked him, killing him instantly. The test was successful. Scrap will be sold later. Experiment 21-7. Diesel 10 was prepped for combat test and then brought in. This will be our final test before the mission is declared operational. Diesel 10 was brought in and combat commenced. Diesel 10 held up a decent fight against Thomas, calling him multiple names, such as creature, beast and monster. He even managed to knock Thomas off the tracks at one point in the fight. However, Thomas eventually gained the upper hand by ripping off the hydraulic claw on the roof. Diesel 10, powerless, begged for mercy, apologizing to steam engines in general. However, Thomas did not show any mercy whatsoever, as he picked up Diesel 10's claw and jammed it into the middle of Diesel 10's face. We've decided to nickname Thomas, The Beast. 